Mr. Davy, and it is time for FAM, the online edition that is our Fine Art Makers program, where we like to explore the history and style of an artist and then try to uh, replicate it ourselves. And just a reminder, this is a program that is being done online and in person. All you have to do is register here at the Harrisburg Library. So this month we are going to be talking about Ellsworth Kelly. He was an American painter uh, that lived between 1923 and 2015. Um, he was a, a painter, a sculptor, a print maker who worked with a lot of hard lines and, um, and did a lot of color field painting and was very minimalistic in what he did. And I have some examples of his artwork uh, behind me. And you might be like, oh, that's really easy to do, really basic. But there is a really interesting thought process behind each one of these pieces. And I'm actually going to be taking you a field trip around the library to sort of explore what he was actually doing in his art so you can understand it a little bit better. Um, and this is Mr. Kelly himself. When I first saw his um, artwork, it really did make, make me think of um, Henry Matisse. And um, he did study some of Matisse's uh, work. Um, which was really interesting to see, but he, and, and if you remember with Matisse, you know, red doesn't mean that it's a fire truck or a fire hydrant, uh, you know, yellow doesn't mean it has to be the sun. So colors don't have to match what the op actual objects um, look like in the real world. So, um, so today with supply wise, you know, you could use crayons, markers, paint, something to draw on. It's, it's really what, you want to work with medium wise and then you know then you're really gonna have to look around where you live or out if you're out at the park or wherever you're at and just really look at the way different shapes different objects look and I'm gonna take you around the library uh, we're gonna look at a few things and discuss sort of the way he kind of would have envisioned it and then I'll come back and uh, try to attempt uh, a piece similar to uh, Mr. Kelly here so um, I will see you in just a moment. Okay, so hopefully you'll be able to hear me. I know I'm gonna have to talk a little bit louder because I'm a little bit further away from the camera. But this is the first sort of shape object I wanted to sort of explore with you. Um, so if Mr. Kelly saw this, there are maybe a few different ways he could have painted this. He might have just painted the railing and it's and with its hard lines. Who knows what color he would use. Um, unfortunately, the sun did vanish, so I don't have the shadow to show you. Or he might paint what he saw through the railing. So maybe just this piece and then this line. And hopefully you're able to see what I'm pointing at. Um, and then go to this box and paint what he's able to see that's coming through. So this would leave kind of like a negative space on the canvas being white where these lines here would be, would be the color. So it's, it's interesting when you start looking around at the different shapes you see all around us. Um, especially shapes with, with these hard angles. Even though this is a tube, if you were just gonna paint it flat, this would almost become hard lines here. So it's one way to look at things. Okay, now here is another thing that Mr. Kelly might have painted. Um, I doubt he would paint what he would see through here this time because it, you know it's very nature, there, there are no hard edges, but he might paint these angles, you know, maybe leaving this piece out and painting this, this part, this part with these hard angles um, and leaving kind of like these voids as negative space. So, I mean, there are lots of different ways of looking at this. Or, you know, he might paint the whole thing. It's, it's all sort of how you kind of feel about the shapes, what you're seeing in the shapes, um, and sort of those lines. Um, and who knows, maybe he would paint it blue or red. Um, orange, green, you know, those, those sort of basic colors. Okay, so now we're out here and we have this, I think it's called a trellis, I'm not sure, but this nice little um, overhang. And you see all these great lines that he could potentially paint. Um, he could paint the negative space, which would be the sky. He could paint the lines. And I'm about to flip this around and you can see the shadows on the ground. So there's a lot of different things that he could Mr. Kelly could have potentially painted it with the, how, the way he looked at things. So let me go ahead and point this to the ground so you can see these wonderful shadows. 
can see, you know, he, he, he could potentially just paint the shadows um, that we have here, um, leaving the negative space, or paint the negative space, letting the shadows be the positive space. So, it, you know, there are lots of different ways you can look at how we see certain shapes and what could actually potentially be really interesting, the paint. It's all about the shape. Not really, it doesn't really matter about the color. It's all about the shape. Okay, so it's it's really interesting. Um, I'm showing you a window very specifically. There was actually a window that Mr. Kelly saw and he liked, and he, he just painted the outlines of the window. So again, we have all these wonderful hard lines, all these shapes. But of course, you did see that, you know, he did have those abstract curves. So I mean, it's it's whatever he's seeing that he likes, that he's he's using in his art. It's all about the shape, uh, and the form, uh, you know, that minimalistic uh, sense that you need to kind of know what that object is or that shape is in order to tell the story within the picture. Because it's all about that that those very basic shapes. Um, and if this, let's say this window had blinds on it, you could then have like those those blinds running through it and maybe not even paint the window and just have those lines from the blinds be what is what you're working with in your piece of art. Okay, and I just want to show you really quick, you know, the curves that we have in architecture. So, you know, we have this curve here, so, and you know, he might paint just that curve, or he might paint that space between the curve and the wall, or he might just paint the, it almost looks like a seven, so, I mean, there's different ways of looking at um, the different shapes that we have in architecture. So, you know, when, when you're looking around and trying to find the shape that you want to paint or shapes that you want to paint that kind of combine together, you know, just, just really have an open mind with uh, what you're looking at and what you're seeing. Hello and welcome back to FAM. Um, so, I decided to paint like this because I'm going to be painting some straight lines. So, what I did initially was First, I had to decide what I want to paint, and I really like the uh, the railing out there, um, the white railing. So I decided I was going to use that as my sort of subject, and I didn't bother I didn't bother to bore you guys with the uh, drawing all of the lines because I figured it would make it easier to uh, paint the hard lines if I had them already drawn out. And of course, my spacing isn't perfect, but you know, it's it's my piece of art, and so um, it may not be exactly spaced the same way out there. But I, you know, I kind of in, enjoy how I got everything finished here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just put a dab of blue paint because I, I decided I'm going to paint my railings blue um, in the spots that I'm actually going to be painting, so I don't get confused later on with what's my negative space, which is the white, and the positive, which is where the color is. So color's gonna go there, there, there. It's then gonna go here, 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 here. Because I'm not gonna put color in the, the railings that are going across, just the ones that are going down. Um, and I'm not going to do the centerpiece because I kind of want that also to be kind of in negative. So that um, I'm going to end up erasing a lot of these pencil lines. But first, I just want to know where I'm going to be putting my paint. Yeah, and I kind of like this color blue, so that's the reason why I decided to go with blue. So um, now it's just pretty much I'm just painting in my 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 spots and you know you don't have to use paint like I was saying you can use marker or crayon pastel watercolor you know whatever you kind of like medium wise and that brush is too soft so I'm gonna go with a little harder brush here there we go so, and then I'm just kind of coloring in between the lines um, cause I, I mean, I cannot freehand a straight line to save my life. So I decided to go ahead and, you know, draw my lines to make it a little bit easier on myself. And honestly, if you really want to get creative, you know, you could do this with cut paper, kind of like Matisse. Um, of course, Matisse, you know, had lots of really interesting waves and lines, not so, not so many straight ones. 
but you can kind of see what I'm doing here. Just filling in my boxes that are the ones that have the color. And I'm not going to bore you with watching me paint all 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Twenty three, twenty three, twenty four 23, 24 uh, boxes here, but I will post an image, uh, like always, in the comments below so you can see what the finished piece of artwork looks like. Um, and like always, please share your art with us. We love seeing it. And um, if there's ever an art issue or style you would like to see us to um, try on FAM, please let us know in the comments below because we do take a look at those. And until next time, keep on painting. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.